good morning. Welcome to something a little different, a little new. I've never done a co-stream before. And so what we're gonna do is hang out and watch the Paradox announcement show. Uh, if you don't know, we stream a lot of Paradox games here. City Skylines, Surviving Mars, Stellaris, and a bunch of other other ones. And I started a little bit early, so right here, ooh, ooh, you can see the countdown. The actual show starts in 11 minutes. And so I figured we could, I don't know, hang out and just chill and chat and then get everything ready there. So when there's about five minutes left, I'm gonna switch to the green screen view and we'll see how this goes. I don't know, like I said, I've never done anything like this before and I'm excited to see your take. And here's my hope. A lot of the games that they do, we stream and they have typically been family friendly. So I'm also hoping that, <laughs> that we don't hit any anything, you know, on this particular one, cause that would be bad. I guess a little bit of a content warning, we might, I don't know. I like the studio and we, we did a run through of a lot of the titles that we might expect and everything seems fine, question mark? <laughs> Cross your fingers. It's a very minor chance of something. Anyways, list of titles that we might see here. So there's White Wolf is one of the, so correct me if I'm mistaken, Paradox is a publisher and they work with a bunch of developers. Uh, uh, so White Wolf is a developer and they might announce something like a new Vampire the Masquerade game. There's Triumph, they make like Age of Unders, Age of Wonders and Overlord, which is exciting. Harebrain Schemes worked on like a Shadowrun game and a Battletech game. Shadowrun is also potentially something that could be bad. Uh, there's Play Iron, I don't know how to pronounce that one. Surviving the Aftermath, another game that we've streamed. I'm excited for the potential of a City Skylines 2. That would be very exciting. Oh, White Wolf is now defunct and Paradox owns all of their IP. Oh, so hold on. Paradox is also a developer and a publisher now. Okay, interesting, 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 interesting. Yeah, there's... Oh, what's the King game called? There's so many games. There's so many, so many, so many games. The show is scheduled to be about 30 minutes long. Could be longer, could be shorter. I don't know. Let's hang out. Crusader Kings. Yes, 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 yes. That's the one. Are you excited? I think all of the Paradox Grand Strategy games are their own devs. So that's Hearts of Iron, Crusader Kings, Victoria, and Stellaris. Wow. Paradox, we are the 4X people. Not just that though, Mushby, because they also do, again, so many of the, like the big city games, the really like fiddly management games that we enjoy, they also do, you know? All right, let's just leave this here. I'm just gonna close Steam in the background. And then again, we'll, uh, once this number hits five, we'll start switching it up and see how that goes. Does White Wolf also hand, pardon me, does Paradox also handle the tabletop stuff? Oh my God, I don't know. <laughs> so Paradox Studios is the in-house developer of Paradox Interactive, the game publisher. Neat. All right, Paradox fans, what are you hyped for? I don't know how much I'm going to freak out if there is a Cities 2. Actually, I'm curious. How much, how much Cities Skylines did I stream? So, Twitch, Tracker. Cities Skylines is my third most streamed game ever. At 169 hours. Nice. <laughs> And in first place, holy moly. Oh, wow, there's Stellaris. There's another Paradox game. 145 hours of Stellaris. Getting close to 3,000 live hours of Minecraft. I mean, if we include 
mine a clock, which isn't in there. I think we're easily past 3,000 hours. Yeah, I don't think that's quite... <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I don't think it's quite the math you wanted there, Kits. Only 125 days of Minecraft? Oh. I'm slacking, apparently. <laughs> A Minecraft number doesn't treat different mod packs differently. Does it need to? I don't know. It's all Minecraft. You're excited and or nervous they announce more DLC for Crusader Kings 3 because the DLCs for that are like either 100% interesting or 100% train wrecks. I mean, they're kind of like DLC the company though, right? How many DLCs are there for Stellaris? I'm typically of the team in those big games, more stuff is normally better, but that's fair. Oh no, CP. Rest up, friend. It's interesting. Of all the games that Paradox has released, I, I bounced off Crusader Kings hard, which I did not expect. That's just me. It's better than the here's two DLCs and we'll see you in five years for the sequel? Yeah. So, man, I'm trying to think of which game I have more DLCs for, if it's Cities or if it's Stellaris. And I think if we're talking about good DLC, bad DLC, for Cities in particular, there's definitely some bad DLC. They added Disasters, which, I mean, mind you, that's bad for me. I'm sure there's a lot of people who are like, yes, blow all my stuff up. That's not what I look for in that game. Oh, I didn't welcome any subs. My apologies. Lunar Eclipse, thank you for the 54 months. Tide Hollow Cat, thank you for the 34. All right, <clears throat> give me a second. It is green screen time. Hello. Hello from the void. <clears throat> so every game of SimCity 2000 ended with you. I'm bored. Time for tornadoes. Mm. Very fair. Do you want? Do you want chat to be on screen for this? I could put you on screen. Have you been good, chat? Would you like out? That's supposed to be you. Where did you go? You're gone forever? How did you die, chat? Maybe they deprecated that. No, because you work on the first screen. Well, never mind. <laughs> Can't figure it out in three minutes. That's fine. What do you use to generate chat for streaming? There's like a built-in OBS widget that normally works. Whatever, so it goes. Surf downstage, thank you for 11 months. Hold. I lied. Oh no, there you are, there you are. You could be here. You could be here, chat. Wait. What in the... Oh! Oh, I'm... 
just so basic right now. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I'm... Yes, everything is fine. All right. So let's put you up here, all right? You're going to be on the stream. You can be a part of this. You can live react to me as well. Um, <laughs> I put it... <laughs> yeah, it, there, there's layers. Picks nailed it. There's layers, and I put it behind... I'm... <laughs> All right. Oh my God, it's literally elevator music. All right, let me know how you like the music. Louder, quieter, you let me know. really elevating your anticipation. Wait, no, no, not like this. No, we just lost a minute. How did this happen? <laughs> Somewhere a producer was like, we need another minute. They're like, just add one. Oh man. All right, okay. I see how it's gonna be paradox. Daylight savings is early. It's like the Windows progress bar. The remaining time is only decorational. Yeah. What if I'm supposed to put on like a co-stream tag? Damn. I have no idea what tag I'm supposed to use. There's nothing official. special event. Alright. Sure. Nearby. Alright everybody. Oh I'm hype. This is the Stellaris music. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. through our game universes, a show packed with the biggest news across the board. Paula. A new adventure game Ooh, good from camera switch. Schemes, a new game from Rod Humble and the team at Paradox Tectonic, and something huge from Colossal Order. And news and updates from a bunch of our titles, such as Crusader Kings, Europa Universalis, and Surviving the Aftermath. This show is for all our players out there. What is it with these camera switches? Who take Sorry. part of city building into perfection, creating the city of your dreams. It is for you who want to see the great empires clash and change the course of history, or maybe just want to stir up some juicy intrigues at a royal wedding. It's for you who can't wait for the next big adventure with mysterious secrets and lethal discoveries. This show is for you. The teams are with us in the studio today. 
The hype is real and we can't wait to share it with you. But before we let this lineup of games loose, we're gonna unleash another natural force upon you. The CEO of Paradox Interactive, Frederick Wester. This is like the most generic dude in tech uniform possible. So first and foremost, welcome to you all who's logged in from across the globe. Um, Hello. We're super happy to, uh, to show this to you today. And um, I think we've all sh had a secret at once that we've been dying to tell the world, but we just haven't been able to. Mm -hmm. Maybe we've been prevented by the rules of the stock exchange, or maybe you've had a project that just hasn't reached the state where you feel comfortable enough to show it to the world. We know exactly what you feel like. But here today, luckily, we have a couple of projects who reached that state. So we're going to show you a handful of new games. We're going to show you a range new of games and updates for our current games. And we're obviously going to update a couple of the games that we've already announced but are yet to be released. But you're not here to hear me talk, obviously. You're here to watch the games. So let's just move on to it. And here's the first trailer. <laughs> that was such a... Sorry, I can't get over the camera stuff. I can't get over it. It's just... Never have I seen now that I see it, I can't unsee it, you know? Only a true master could. I got it. Ooh. Only a true master, huh? Exactly. These fingers are the pride of Cairo. Did I ever tell you about the time? Are those famous fingers done yet? Uh, uh. Checking the video quality. Corporal, check that out! Anybody recognize this title? What is this? <laughs> Bait and tackle? Anyone spare a match? Didn't even get to use my gun. There are other ways to solve problems, you know? Well, there are lots of solutions out there. You just killed a man! Punching. Oh, and uh... Running. Oh, uh, plan C again? The Lamplighters League and the Tower at the End of the World. What? Somebody called it Indiana Jones XCOM. Hold on. Time out? What? What? Uh, yeah, <laughs> what am I streaming this? Apparently coming uh, 2023. Stop, wish we could be with you, but we're here in Seattle finishing the game. We're excited to tell you what we've been working on. We're Hairbrain Schemes. You may know us from our other games, the Shadowrun Trilogy and Battletech. Our new game is called the Lamplighters League and the Tower at the End of the World. So in pre-recorded, when you have a camera switch like that, it's so that you can nice cut the dialogue to make the editing cleaner without doing that weird YouTube cut thing. So close to victory. But that was also really the weird. Itself. The best of the best are all dead. So you'll need the best of the worst. Thieves, scoundrels, cutthroats, and traitors to stop them. Just like our other games, the Lamplighters League features turn-based tactical combat. But unlike our other games, this one adds a real-time infiltration phase. In real time, you'll scout the enemy oh. before deciding that things are going to get loud. There's a series of games that already do that, that are either like Western and Samurai, do you know what I mean? Key enemies that I don't want in my fight. So I get to pick and choose how I engage. You can just steamroll your way down one way or increase your options. Uh, it kind of really depends on how you how you want to play. You never seem to run out of like the depth of choice, oh. right? And it's just, it's constantly surprising. And even when things look really dire, you can like snatch victory from defeat. <laughs> you can also snatch defeat from victory, <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> I do think one of my favorite things about the gameplay is that- The corporate director here is hurting. Factor is finding I can't, I can't unsee it, Chris. Not just of characters bouncing off of each other, yeah. but how can I use- Thinking like commandos and shadow tactics sort of stuff? Yeah, that is what I'm thinking of, yeah. This mission yeah. compared to another mission. 
I really, really appreciate the, the focus on story and the focus on character um, and the ability to kind of see these people change and grow over the course of the game. I like the mix, the mix of a problem to solve to keep these characters alive while I grow more attached to them every mission. They're very human and they don't come together without friction, so it's pleasant uh, to watch them interact with each other as they try and get out of tough scrapes. Yeah, we made it so that they all have things to say to each other, both on and off the field. You know, we really tried to make them as much of a, like a team, a, a reluctant team at first, but a, but a team as possible. Everyone here are the best of the worst, so to speak. They are rogues. Best These the are not worst. the people you look to to save the world. It is about them doing what they have to do to survive and doing what they have to do to really just get ahead. When you play and you try different characters, um, you know, I've said it before, but it's kind of a new experience every time. Thanks for watching. And now back to you in the studio. Wow! Teams and treasures, mistress and monsters. The Lamplighters League is a thing, and it's coming out this year. We're off to a good start, but we want more. Here we go. A tournament. A time for festivities. All right, here's the kingdom. Games, but also an occasion to build up. Sorry. Alliances. Brain. Some. Even DLC time. The martial feats on Crusader display. Kings. That's my assumption. Yeah, An yeah, yeah. Happy princess. Can she find a champion for her doomed cause? One whose virtue and valor can restore glory to her faded family name, or one who will protect her name by hook, or by crook, <laughs> and help her get revenge. Hmm. Real strategy requires cunning. The Tours and Tournaments DLC. That is cool art, though. Just the reflection of the other knight running towards him and the, the mask there. Alex, it seems like you're really giving the role players out there what they want. We are indeed. This uh, expansion is full of things for the role players. You can take your entourage and set out on the road, go on a great tour across your realm, or set off to foreign realms to participate in tournaments, among other things. Wow, that sounds like a lot of fun. What will you be able to do more exactly? You will be able to um, become the grand champion of tournaments by going to various realms and participating. Of course, there's a lot of other things you can uh, take out some extra taxes from your vassals on a grand tour. You can arrange <laughs> grand weddings. What do these all have in common? Intrigue. Intrigue. Oh. Well, it wouldn't be Crusader Kings without it, right? What, how can I use these sort of festivities and events to my advantage? You can, for example, enact vengeance upon your rivals by inviting them to a feast or a wedding and eliminating their entire family. <laughs> Or you can just show the world how grand you are and that you are the best at the God, tournament. the stories you can get out of this game are kind oh, of amazing. What, I, what will happen exactly yeah. if I win a tournament? Wish I could get more into it. Well, winning is quite hard, mm. and there are many other reasons to go there, of course. Mm. Uh, if nothing else, hosting it will make you seem incredibly grand. And then if you manage to win, you will increase your skills and uh, you can impress most people in the world. All right. But... What will we wear? What about the fashion? <laughs> oh, we are introducing armor through the ages and fashion, specifically um, showing the early and late Western ideals of... Like Sane Grand? Look, great. this person is doing great. Interesting. So you, you can tell are gonna drop some how nervous on. they are and they are absolutely crushing it, right? Like yeah. their language delivery is spot on. on. To far away lands, a regent will rule in your stead. And of course, you can also be this regent, which means that you have plenty of opportunities for uh, underhanded and some peaceful ways of taking over a realm. All right, when will we be able to play this on PC? So we do not have a date yet, oh. but you can wishlist now. All right, well, you heard him. Go over there, wishlist the game, but what about the console players? This spring, the console players will have access to the royal court. All right. Well, thank you so much, Alex. Thank you. 
We are always on the quest to find the paradox game solved tomorrow. For like a presentation, this control, they've rehearsed it a few times. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Our love for like, I bet you there's still a prompter, but they're doing a really good job of like looking around. They're doing pauses and stuff. I mean, obviously she's doing an amazing job as a presenter. I didn't want to, I want to focus on the content, not the production, but my brain, and my producer brain is just like, and, uh, camera switchies, eh? <laughs> this is what's next for Paradox Arc. All right, we'll talk about the games so we can analyze everything afterwards. Wait, are they making a TCG? What? Oh, across, they make across the obelisk? Oh no. I did not know Paradox had across the obelisk. The studio doesn't miss. Just, sorry, publishing, dev, that's fair, yeah. So if you don't know, Across the Obelisk is like Slay the Spire, but multiplayer. You can play it as a squad, and every person in your party is controlled by a different player. It's very cool. What is this? I like robots. Ever since Total Annihilation came out, I'm very weak to this particular aesthetic. Oh, the robots got bigger! <laughs> it's an auto battler? No way! What? Robot auto battler? Machabellum. Oh my god. Oh yeah. The next installment of the epicest fantasy series. Now with enhanced graphics. Oh, uh, it, it's still pixel art. Gather your party of pixelated bodies. And roll the dice in this groundbreaking game of turn-based RPG adventure. Explore legally distinct dungeons. Ooh, legally distinct. Okay. Goblins? Or something. Root margin. Soundtrack is a banger. Epic and funny finishing voice line. Ha! Please buy this game so I get to keep my job. <laughs> wow, maybe a little too honest there. Three in a row, just like that. That was intense. Lots of exciting games to look Lots forward to from Ark. Uh, Dennis, tell us what just went on on the screen there. So the first game we saw uh, was Across the Obelisk, the new DLC called The Wolf Wars. Mm. The second we saw was Mechabellum, and this is our new auto battler with mechs. The mechs, yeah. yeah. And the mm -hmm. third one we saw was the third installment of Knight and Pen and Paper 3. Cool. Yeah. So when will we be able to play all of these cool games? Across the Obelisk, you'll be able to play on the new DLC. You'll be able to play on March the 30th. Mm -hmm. uh, Mechabellum, you'll be able to play on May 11th. Yeah. And Knights of Pen and Paper 3, you'll be able to play tomorrow. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> if this guy... <laughs> For you who just tuned in. I was gonna say, if that guy had a goatee instead of a mustache, he'd look exactly like Shaggy from Scooby Doo. Game where you will be able to steal, sneak, and shoot your way around the world. Like a splitting image, just the same body posture and everything. Zoinks! Where the festivities doesn't always pan out the way it was intended for everyone involved. We have a bunch of news and updates for our games, so don't go anywhere. And remember. We promised you something. Big oh, yeah, when Shaggy retires from, you know, solving mysteries and gets a job as a software developer. That is for an important reason. Over to you, Fred. Thank you, Paula. Um, so we've been asked questions of what our studio in Berkeley, Paradox Tectonic, has been up to. And we're happy to tell you that it's a new game, but not only that, it's also a new genre to Paradox. So it's something super exciting and something that is incredibly new to us that we can explore and take further. 
But um, not only, we're going to tell you a lot more about this game going forward uh, during the spring, but we're going to start with a little teaser trailer here at the Paradox Announcement Show, and it starts now. Mm -hmm. Wait, are they making their own Sims? What? Hello? in your calendar for the announcement event and subscribe to the YouTube channel. You will have this teaser trailer. This is the pre-announcement announcement? Okay. Now, this. They can do better Sim City. Why can't they do better Sims? No, totally. I think somebody coming in and grabbing the box of that genre and shaking it up, you know? Pulled us straight into the action with that trailer. Sonia, come on up here. Tell us hey, about Paula. this expansion. Well, this expansion is the newest uh, European Universal is for. And it's going to be epic. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be deep and global. What does HOO stand Spain, for? Of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, also France, Britain, the Ottomans, uh, China, Russia, Japan. So those uh, are a little bit of the head of operations. That we Thank wanted you. to change, kind of. Right. I know. I saw that too, Chris. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, if you think about this, uh, these countries are the most played by, by our uh, players. Okay. So we really wanted to do like a, something challenging, something new, something fresh for them. Um, so we really wanted to change the whole experience for them so they kind of feel that uh, we wanted to give some love. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> but if I'm then replaying one of these great empires, mm -hmm. what new things will I be able to discover there? Well, we are adding new mechanics, mm -hmm. uh, new mission trees. So kind of if you're one of play uh, with Spain, for instance, you will have a, a new complete set of, of missions. Uh, we are also adding branching missions, which is extremely fun to play mm -hmm. because you kind of decide um, the faith of your nation. Uh, and of course, uh, government reforms, uh, state and privileges, uh, units, of course, music pack, all in. We went all in for this. You certainly did. But when will we be, we be able to play it? Well, anytime soon, actually. So yeah. uh, just wish list it now. All right, wish list it is. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Here's a quick look at more great Paradox games coming out real soon. A power older than time has returned. Free from their imprisonment, ancient wizard kings come seeking lost magics and new realms to conquer, turning all whom they encounter by choice or by force. Oh. <laughs> strife. Champions arise. New unities are founded. And powerful arcane knowledge Unlocked as gods and mortals clash, the forces unleashed will shape a new age of wonders. A lot of people have been telling me to check this one out. Characters look really cool. Oh, 
<laughs> I'm not familiar with this series. Is it close to like uh, Heroes of Might and Magic where you have heroes and RTS stacks? Or is it closer to like a traditional 4X? Diablo-ish. Closer to Civ? Yeah, no, it definitely seemed like a 4X. I meant more mechanically, not, you know, story or lore-wise. Here, similar to Heroes of Mind Magic? Okay. Yeah, look like artifacts. Yeah, okay, okay. Autonomous investment. Uh-oh. Has automation gone too far? <laughs> Hello? You have my attention. You think this is first contact? Tell us the story about how we got the stars. Please. Again? <laughs> oh, all right. I'll tell you the story. When they arrived, those early days were filled with hope and marvel. All that knowledge, all the answers to the mysteries of the universe within our grasp. But we soon realized... I bet you their big finish is going to be City Skylines 2. That's my hope. That's my hope. Subjects. Their true intentions became clear. The grand finale, whatever. Then what happened, Mom? The spirit of our people could never be broken. And eventually, we reclaimed our home and forced them to leave. Oh. So this isn't called a precursor civilization. What's it called when another civilization elevates them or whatever? It looks like that's what happened here. They showed up and they're like, nah, we don't want to be under you. Still out there. Free FTL? Yeah. Uplift, right, right, right. But Thank the next you. Next time we meet them, we will be prepared. Mm. March 14th. Oh no, I'm gonna fall into the Stellaris hole again. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Did I? Have I not played this? Since what are their giant bugs? What? That made it more RTS? More information about Rebirth, the new expansion from... Time out? I think that's a change I really wanted. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Is it possible to come out on the other side of the aftermath? Yes, and that is precisely the theme and also a new endgame goal for this DLC. We are literally and figuratively taking players to greener pastures this time. Yeah, and I saw in the trailer there were lots of greenery there. There were farming going on. Tell us a bit about that. The main new feature here is terraforming. Okay. So survivors can finally turn the environment into a clean and lush once again. And there's, of course, new buildings and mechanics that come with that. Yeah. And I could see some mon insects monsters that look pretty intense. What's <laughs> going on there? It's never that easy with this game, is it? No. 
this time we have a new threat called the blight. Mm. And that is a disease that spreads throughout the world and it infects people and animals alike. And also, it turns the environment into a breeding ground for these blighted creatures. I mean, I do like the idea that the enemies in this game aren't just other humans. Push back, research the infected, and that way overcome the challenge this time. All right. Yeah, no, you're never making it easy for us. That's for sure. Uh, but you're here with rebirth and you know what i feel that it's we're coming sort of full circle here because the first time i met you i don't know if you remember you were wearing a full-on hazmat suit i can't forget that. <laughs> no you were announcing the game at yes. the stage at pdxcon right and now you're back here with new hope for the aftermath and you even had a little plant in the trailer yeah. yeah, we come a full circle with this DLC, and it is a perfect ending for the first season of Surviving the Aftermath. And I'm really excited about this DLC, so you really should wishlist it now. Yes! <laughs> Thank you so much, Lasse! <laughs> nice. We have a big birthday coming up! I'm gonna have to revisit and that game. When we celebrate, we like to throw a big-ass party. And the Pardon? party gets so much better when we are sharing it with millions of city builders out there. We're talking about City Skyline's birthday and the birthday of city players around the world. We have saved a birthday gift just for you. And I'm going to hand it over to Fred and Marina, who are going to deliver it straight to you. Thank you, Paula. Fred here, and I'm back, and this time uh, joining me is CEO of Colossal Order, Marina Halikainen. Welcome. Thank you so much, Fred. I am so happy to be here. And we have been working together for the longest of times, right? We have. I, I still remember that demo you sent over to us in uh, 2009, I think it was. So time flies, huh? It definitely does. And uh, that demo did set something in motion, right? <laughs> It did, for sure, you could say that. Yeah. So they recently announced City Skylines VR, is turning eight. which is Friday, not, actually. So happy birthday to City not my, uh, my world. And, I want uh, to. I want City Skylines too. Come on. Add on top of that? Absolutely. I think we should have a look. Eight years. Maligayang kaarawan, City Skylines. Hola, soy Leal y feliz cumpleaños a City Skylines. I wish City Skylines a happy birthday. Happy birthday, City Skylines. Happy birthday, City Skylines. Happy birthday, City Skylines. Happy birthday, City Skylines. Six million players. Gracias por permitirnos hacer ciudades sin I really love this game because every time I play it, I can let my creativity flow. I love this game so much that my boss allowed me to watch videos of it while working because he knows how much it calms me down. One thing I love about this game is that it finally lets me live out my childhood dreams of being a city planner. It's been a great eight years and I'm excited to see what's going to happen next. <laughs> I'm sorry, was that a million hours? Ah! 400,000 mods. <laughs> wow, what a game and what a community. Over 500,000 assets and mods created for the games. That's a since billion hours? <laughs> Think about it, five and a half million new players last year. That's basically the population of Finland. Yeah, it's amazing. And uh, we came here, I told everyone early on that we were going to spill a lot of secrets today, and uh, this is no exception. Do you have any secrets you want to share today? Definitely. I have been waiting for a few years to share this secret with all of you. So basically, I think for us, isn't it time to take the next step forward? I most definitely think so. It's time to start from the beginning. <laughs> Not gameplay. Thank you. <laughs> into something new. <laughs> Cities, skylines, ants. Yeah. Oh. Hello. Oh, it's beautiful. This city has a story. 
Envision a world created by you. Ah! Actually getting shivers. <laughs> I like how hype I get for city builders. Like, ah! <gasps> Your chance to shape the future. To create and inspire. Expand way up high. And bring life to your creations. New worlds to explore and pursue. the creator you make cities yes Was there a date? Hold on. Time out. I may have missed some stuff. What was there an announcement date? Or just just a we're working on this game sort of thing. 2023. Okay. Okay. So this year. That's exciting. That's exciting. All right, hold on. There's a Steam page. Wishlist now. All right, what did we think? I got a couple of subs in the middle of that. I wanted to wait for everything to sort of wrap up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Surf Stage, thank you for 11 months. Evo, thank you for the 65 years. Thank you very much, friend. Brightstorm Rising, thank you for the prime in 31 months. All right, okay. Did I say 65 years? Sorry, 60 months in five years. Look, that announcement kind of hit me there. Yeah, what did you, what did everybody think? Let me, let me gather your thoughts. I'm going to go to the booth. I'm going to undo the green screen. All right, what did we think? Dr. Nick, thank you for 27 months. So what all did they announce? They announced a Indiana Jones XCOM game, which looks totally sick. I'm very excited about that. Let's, let's ignore the production. Let's ignore the production. The production was really weird and kind of off-putting the whole time. Uh, I want to focus on the games, not the people, because the people are doing their best, and they did a very good job, and they put on a very good show. We'll just leave it like that. <laughs> Look, live production is very hard. As somebody who has made a lot of mistakes on live shows, I want to be extra forgiving. <laughs> I don't think anyone could ever flub anything harder than I did live interviewing the McElroy brothers. So we'll, we'll, we'll just leave it at that, you know? All right. So they have the new XCOM 
Indiana Jones game. That looks very, very, very cool. What did people think about that? I will play the heck out of that game. I think I'm kind of hyped for that. That was called... Oh, it had a really long name. Something, something, something in the tower at the end of time or something weird like that. It was lamp lighters and the tower at the end of the adventure. Lamp lighters league chronicles. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. My, and this is a very small critique. My preference in an XCOM game is that you can lose characters and have there be permanent consequences or have there be, you know, a, a, a fit, not necessarily a fail state, but a, a, an opportunity to stumble and then have to continue and persevere through it. I worry with a game like that, which is very narrative and very character heavy, that that is gone, which is fine. This makes it a different style of game. You know what I mean? Like your fail state is you lose and then you reload your save game as opposed to you lose a bunch of people, but you keep trying to go anyways. I don't know. The name of the, is a mouthful? Yes. <laughs> Knights of Pen and Paper 3 releases in 22 hours. Not my style of game, but... I can imagine a lot of people really enjoy that. I like the idea. All right, we'll, we'll talk about the Knights of Pen and Paper 3 then. I love the idea of that game, which is what if you get to play D&D with your friends, but in a video game, but the video game is just making fun of D&D with your friends, right? I thought that was a very interesting sort of subversion back. We play video games because we want to recreate that experience of playing D&D with your friends. But what if the video game was just playing D&D &D with your friends, <laughs> right? <laughs> also a big fan of the tongue-in-cheek humor, specifically the line, please buy my game so I still have a job, was refreshingly honest, you know? <laughs> the pen and paper games are basically an affectionate parody. I've never even heard of that franchise before. Hmm. Skunky! Thank you for 34 months of Tier 2 support. Over a third of a year, you're on your way there. Oh, Mecha Bellum! I've never played an auto battler before. So Mecha Bellum is what if auto battler but giant mecha robots? Did like the graphic style to it. I wonder if Mecha Bellum is going to be also free to play because correct me if i'm mistaken but aren't the vast majority of auto battlers free or no am i am i misunderstanding how those work what's up exosa thank you for that prime in 20 months i'm thinking like tft i'm thinking what was the one that lsv was working on that had the um the fairy tale theming behind it you know i think that was also free to play too Hmm. I'm excited to try the beta for Mechabellum after work today. Oh, wow, it's already out. Storybook Brawl. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're going back to the Lamplighters game. I enjoy games where you can lose the game and continue, except with you lost here and the consequences there of now becoming part of the world. Somehow it makes victories more important if the story doesn't guarantee you winning every beat. One of the important things that Stellaris does that I think makes it stand out in the 4X genre is the introduction of crises. Crises? Crises? I don't know how to pluralize that word. The mid-game the mid -game crisis and the end-game crisis of Stellaris are really cool. Because they take sort of the established path that the game is going, which can get quite stale in a 4X. Because typically in a 4X, you've already won <laughs> very, very early on. Because the games are so momentum driven, right? You either rock it ahead or you fall behind it. You can never catch up. There's no catch up mechanic. And I love how they use Crisis to be like, oh, you were winning? Well... 
Unfortunately, a bunch of space pirates just showed up and they have kicked your teeth in and now enjoy the next two hours being recovering from that or having to form an alliance from that. Or look, an ancient superpower is reawoken and it's taken over half the galaxy. What do you do with this? Catch, have fun, right? And so I do hope that, I mean, I like that style of game. It's not for everybody. So my hope would be the game has something like that, but it'll probably be, still be very fun if it doesn't, you know? I know where you're coming from. It's a lot of speculation just from seeing, you know, strong character personalities in an XCOM game. And we've, we've speculated, we've spun up all of this hypothetical of what it could be. I find that quite funny. Next, Stellaris DLC. What do we want to talk about next? We're kind of talking about Stellaris there. First contact. There's always Crusader Kings where your wastrel air can blow up 100 years of preparation. Yeah. What is... So, a couple of DLCs ago, they actually introduced the first contact system, right? Which is the idea that when you first meet anything in space, you don't inherently know what it is. You have to send an envoy, you have to study it, and sometimes you're like, oh, look, it's friendly space whales. And sometimes you're like, oh, look, it's an ancient precursor civilization. You don't know because you don't know how to talk to them and you have to learn. Right, that was a subset of the diplomacy expansion. What does this DLC add more than that? Does it just dive in and add an entire DLC worth of that concept? Because that's fascinating to me. So this is different. This is about interacting more with pre-FTL species and also pain origins that nerf your start. Oh, plain origins that nerf your start. Oh, interesting. Oh. Right. It's also about cloaking technology and expanding the relics. Yes, I've heard that they are massively reworking certain star systems that you can either do anti-cloaking or defensive fortifications. You can't do both. So you can't make as hard of a of a um a bottleneck station. They've also made it so the nebulas, you can have like large storm systems that if your ships go through, they'll actually damage like the shields and the armor. So if you set up a defensive area behind a nebula or you fight inside of one, it could actually have very real consequences, which is kind of cool. Star bases have a detection module thingy, so it's competing with other stuff. Yeah. Cloaking works a little bit better. So I was reading in our Discord, we have a strategy game section. I trust Serafina with a lot of the facts about Stellaris. And apparently the stuff that went through the nebula was kind of like um a fake damage. It was a pseudo damage. It wasn't real damage. And they're reworking it so it has much more solid consequences. I don't know. I don't know the specifics of it. Do they have patch notes out for it yet? I don't know if it's out yet, so they probably don't have patch notes for it yet. You're very excited for this new update. I think the last Solaris update I played, I didn't stream it, is I got the fish update. I got the fish people update, which was kind of cool. And I, I poked around a bit alone. Might want to check it out again. And of course, I guess, let's just go to Cities 2. I'm excited. I'm very excited for Cities 2. You can now send your ships into Empire Space if they're cloaked. Oh, are the borders. Sorry, just waiting for the chat delay of people giving updated stuff on Stellaris. All right. Cities 2. I am very, very, very excited for Cities 2. Now, I do have a fear. I have a fear in the, in the pit of my chest. And this is something that every single Sims player has gone through, which is how bare bones is the base game going to be knowing their roadmap for DLC? Right? Right? That being said, Cities 2 desperately needs to happen. They have, they have added and stretched as much as they possibly can. 
out of the base game and it's, it's falling apart. I tried to do a playthrough not too long ago with the vast majority of the DLC and, you know, the 800 mods that you need to make the game playable at this point. And it, it just kind of fell apart, which is really unfortunate because I love that. That'll be the big question. If they leave out a lot of the stuff they added in one, it's going to be a little cruddy. Yeah, I know. I mean, but that's, you know, that's what happens with Sims. Every time a new Sims game comes out, they sit there and they're like, ah, I don't have pets. Well, that's frustrating. The modded community will need some time to catch up. I hope that a lot of the really, really popular mods just make it in into the base game, right? Traffic Circle Builder. Something like Move It, right? Something that lets you tweak the roads. If you look at, you know, what is the what is the vast majority of the players using and can you incorporate it? I mean, World of Warcraft did that for a while too. They'd look at popular mods for UI and stuff like that. Be like, okay, this is just base game now. Fingers crossed for the features like Metro Overhaul mod making it into the base game. Yeah, you know, exactly. Exactly. Right, of course, they also had a Sims-like game. Oh my god. You're playing Mecha Bellum right now, says ZP? Oh my god. Okay. Oh, interesting. I hope they look at mods and say that's a nice idea, but hope they hopefully they don't run into issues with IP. Yeah, like somebody else made it. Somebody else owns it, you know? Hmm. A Sims game not by EA. Has anyone else tried their hand at The Sims? I'm very curious about that. Trying to think of it. I do think with their vast resume for management style games, they could probably do a pretty good take at it. Paralives has been in development for a bit. Who's doing Paralives? I've never even heard of that one. Paralives on Steel, on Steam. An upcoming dollhouse life simulation indie game. Oh. Announced in 2019. Huh. Your partner loves Sims, plays it on PC whenever he can. I mean, Joe loves The Sims. Two, three, four. We could build a very impressive pillow fort out of all the DLC cases that we have lying around, right? <laughs> like, You love three more than four? There you go. There's Joe's official review. Yeah, the world ability of three was very fun. She's like, I also got so much three DLC, it's kind of hard to go to four. I know that feel. Neat. The Joe official review. Heck yeah. All right. This was very cool. This is my first ever co-stream. I hope you enjoyed this. This was kind of neat. If it's the sort of thing that we liked, and we could also line it up more with studios and what's the word I'm looking for here? Publishers. Brain. Studios and publishers that we kind of um, we kind of vibe with. We'll check it out. It's tough because a lot of the a lot of like the big, big game shows are definitely not our like family friendly vibe. So I don't want to just start streaming all of them. <laughs> but this was neat. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. I guess maybe we watch the announcement announcement in a couple of weeks. We'll see. All right.